Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Jake and you can also call me Atrocious and today we are going to be watching the Hiroshima Japan Championships for the One Piece trading card game in the OP08 format. I'm very excited for this even though it's a red purple law mirror maybe not something that people are going to be excited about. I'm really curious to see how this mirror match goes. Overall, we got the player on the right who we saw in the previous round take down the Doflamingo spoiler alert. If you haven't watched that video already, go check out the other videos in the tournament playlist if you have not already. But going to be going first overall. The player on the left, though, this player right here, we've actually seen this player in the previous rounds in this so we've seen both of these deck lists seen them showcased we'll see how it goes and how the differences in the two deck lists go i know that the player on the left is playing different cards like beppo and zoro juro could be really good in this matchup while the player on the right is opting for more queens rush zoro in a sense like that so but pretty similar lists overall in the grand skeleton of things just a heads up this is not my content either this is the official stream that we're watching as i pause uh, to do my little explanation. This is the official stream. I'll have it in the description below a link if you want to watch that not hear me yet But for those of you that want to hear me yet, let's talk about it So this starting hand is a Gordon Charlotte pudding queen Blocker law and also a blocker kid. So a couple different blockers in here. You do have a Gordon right away and honestly a very interesting hand for the player on the left, you've got the Black Maria, Beppo, Sachi Penguin, Raise Max, and a 2K Sanji. So both sides with some blockage and then also a uh, minus in power kind of character in there. But a little bit of difference in the hands. The left side has a Black Maria, a great card. I constantly talk about it in the videos of Black Maria, a great, great card in this deck but also the beppo so a little bit of ramp options overall in the game for the player on the left but we'll see with black maria how impactful actually beppo is in this game now the black maria i will say being a 2000 power character is viable for the opposing law to bottom deck it without having to utilize any gordons or raise maxes so it's going to be really interesting to see how that kind of balance plays out in this one and with the player on the right side going first just drawing a dawn and passing and so player on the left draws a card it's going to be a useless captain kid blocker very nice and just passes it right back to the player on the right the player on the right now at three dawn overall we'll see exactly what they do i'd be curious to see like the pudding come down in this one especially at Three. Now that you have two of them in hand, going to be taking that 5k swing in life. Another useless Captain Kid blocker going to be playing that pudding overall and passing the turn. So really saying, okay, since this pudding is a 4,000 power character, you got to commit a Gordon or a Raise Max. And that's one Gordon or Raise Max that I'm not going to have to worry about later. So swinging five right at the law going to be taking it just like his opponent did a kid and killer very very good the player on the left is going to be playing one pudding of their own going to be using the raise max to get rid of the pudding and using that leader effect to bottom deck the pudding and play a sachi penguin so the sachi penguin is going to be able to get back to dawn rested and then through the pudding get another dawn rested so they're back exactly where they were kind of a perfect four dawn turn in my opinion for this trafalgar law you want to get something else you know maybe besides the pudding but the pudding as you just saw is a good card to have in this early game really interesting to not play the black maria maybe the black maria is something that you play outside of the mirror match overall we've seen the strength and how it's been prioritized right in the previous games but now really being more hesitant 
to play that card. I think it's a very, very interesting interaction and something that if you want to play Trafalgar Law in OPO8, you probably understand a little bit more in this mirror match. So the player on the right side drawing, I think the Sachi and Penguin right here, really think about what they want to do. They do have a Gordon, so they are going to be able to bottom deck stuff. And with four Dawn, you can play something like the Trafalgar Law, right? They only have five cards in hand, so you can't get anything off of that. But just going to be swinging six at life at this point. So we'll see where the player on the left decides to go. They could use that 2K Sanji right to counter out of it. They could use the Black Maria, but going to be taking the life instead grabbing a uh, Trafalgar Law blocker off of this. So only six in hand, so the blocker law effect still won't be in action if played down. But looking at three maybe and potentially another pudding. So could see a pudding Gordon play to bottom deck either the pudding or the Sachi Penguin. Could be interesting to see which one they actually do. Going to be minusing the pudding. So both players kind of really respecting the pudding that's being played down in the mirror match, especially in that situation right there. You know, they could have put down the Sachi and Penguin, and just like that, how the player on the left did the pudding Sachi Penguin play, the player on the right has done the exact same thing in there. So really, really cool in my opinion. Now at, I believe, 6 Dawn overall, the Kid and Killer coming in tan. The Kid and Killer will be impactful if the opponent, the player on the right, ends up taking a life at this point. So we'll see exactly what happens. Maybe the Beppo is going to come down. We could see in this off of a leader effect. Could play also the Eustace Captain Kid. At this point, the Usus Captain Kid, a good card, right? Because it does allow you to get Dawn back every time you use the Dawn minus leader effect. But being at a 6,000 power character, it's just one Gordon or raise max away from being bottom deck. So maybe that's a little bit of the fear at this part. They're showing the Raju on screen. Raju could be really nice to be able to draw cards, but going to be attaching one and swinging six at lead. So a couple different options that they could move on from this depending on what happens. May just be using the 5 Dawn to play the Eustace Captain Kid as they take this life. Going to be no trigger and a Trafalgar Law Blocker. So the Trafalgar Law Blocker is potentially going to be active as they play this Eustace Captain Kid. Going to be using the Dawn Minus to play another character down. That Sanji because they are behind in Dawn, that Sanji is actually going to cost three to be able to play. And as a 6,000 power character, that cost three or less effect on the Trafalgar Law is going to be able to play that card overall. Because in the hand, according to the rules of the game, when you have two or fewer Dawn card than your opponent, in your hand, this card costs three less. So really, really interesting inclusion that becomes very, very popular in OPO7 with this deck and many others. But now moving into the player on the right's turn, they get a queen off the top deck. So could be nice overall in this. The player on the left really just avoiding the Trafalgar Law blocker at this point. And with Seven cards in hand, the player on the right might be able to do the same if they're worried about that in this one. But the thing about the player on the right's hand, they don't have any 2Ks at all in their hand. No Sanjis, no Otamas, no Sachi Penguins, no Black Marias. This deck plays a ton of 2Ks actually. Oh my gosh, they play 16 2Ks overall in a lot of these lists very very high number that we see here although i would say the sachi penguin the black maria several of these 2ks actually do get played in the game that's the difference so attaching one and swinging six at the sachi penguin going to be a black maria 2k counter so Opting to get rid of that, the Black Maria, just really not having much 
in there, not having to commit a block on the kid. And so using the queen to draw two cards right here, going to be trashing one. Got one Don left, and that one could be used on a Gordon to bottom deck the Eustis Captain Kid, as I was mentioning earlier. The Eustis Captain Kid going away would be really, really nice because the Sanji doesn't have that same in play value that the Eustace Captain Kid has with being able to bring back Active Dawn. And so going to be getting rid of one of the Eustace Captain Kids. They had three in hand, going to be tough, and ramping one Dawn from that pudding because Dawn was returned to their Dawn deck. So one Dawn left. I'm still in the, uh, in the group of potentially using the uh, Gordon right here to bottom deck the kid and so they see that Gordon coming down could play something like the kid and killer the kid and killer could be good off of the leader effect to be able to knock out the Sachi and Penguin right you could potentially clear two bodies overall because your opponent is at two or less life so Going to be minusing the kid, and so using the leader effect to bottom deck the kid at this point. Or I'm pretty sure they are. Maybe just trying to think about what exactly they're going to play off of it. Or maybe if they want to do it at all, right? I think you probably should since you already bottom deck from the Gordon. And so going to be putting that kid away. And let's see exactly what they play. It is, I think, going to be the Kid and Killer. Only four cards in hand on the left side. That Kid and Killer comes down. Swing seven now at that 5K Sachi Penguin. So it is going to force the Sanji to do something, right? If they decide to block with the Sanji, you can expect another swing from the Sachi and Penguin that's on the right side to be able to swing once again. Added. And so it's either let this get KO'd, which is one less body on the field for you. You can commit a couple cards on counter, which you don't have any more 2Ks in hand. So it would require every single one of your counter cards in hand, right? You only have 3K worth of counter or block and commit two cards overall. I think you just got to take the L on it and get the Sanji and Penguin knocked out, right? It's just so many cards to commit to be able to either save the Sachi and Penguin or save the, or Sachi and Penguin, I'm sorry, to be able to save that off of this KO. And it's just too many cards, in my opinion, to be able to save the Sanji once you block and it not get KO'd. So we'll see exactly what they want to do in this one. It could be interesting on where they go. Still two life in this one one life left for the player on the right and i i mean i'm in the camp of just letting sachi and penguin go away especially if sachi and penguin goes away if they player on the right tilts their sachi and penguin sideways you just get a free block with the sanji right and going to be resting the Sanji and so this invites the play right here you're gonna have to get rid of all of your counter and that's exactly what they do use the Trafalgar Law and the Beppo to save the Sanji blocker and then use the Eustace Captain Kid to be able to save the Sanji and Penguin yet again off of the Sanji and Penguin mirror violence going on so going to be drawing card it's an Otama the Otama could actually be pretty interesting overall. And Otama being played would get rid of the Kid and Killer overall, right? Because Kid and Killer only gets that power boost on your turn, not on your opponent's turn. So swinging seven first at the, um, at the, uh, it could be at lead, it could be at the Sachi Penguin, not 100% sure. Lead would be interesting. At this point, they only have five cards in hand. Still one life, though, and you have potentially three other swings incoming. One of those swings being a 7K swing in the Kid and Killer that you can play off of the leader effect. So one thing, if you try to go for game at this point, right, if you're not clearing board right now, one thing that you can do is swing seven now, swing like seven again, 
maybe, or eight with the Sachi Penguin. I think seven's probably better to then swing eight off of the Sanji, use leader effect, not really bottom deck anything if you don't want to play the Kid and Killer and swing a final seven overall and see if they have enough for that. I'd have to imagine though that this seven is probably going at either the Kid and Killer or Sachi and Penguin. If I had to take a guess, you want to minimize the amount of swings coming at you next turn right now and with only one case in their hand right now just a couple blockers well really all blockers i guess it's a little bit more than a couple a lot of people would say it's going to be interesting to see where they go on this especially with a seven if you committed three cards overall that would only leave you with two in hand and that would be pretty telling overall of what your hand actually looks like in this certain situation because there would be no reason to not pitch a 2k and a 1k instead of just three 1ks unless you really just wanted to play that much mind games in my opinion in this one so it looks like they might actually counter They could also be thinking of doing something like blocking with the queen and then countering out to be able to save the queen. It would require one less card to be able to do that action, but going to be pitching three, going to be pitching Trafalgar Law and the kids off of that to be able to save. And if I'm my opponent, if I'm the player on the left, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Okay, that was a play. And so we'll see exactly what they want to do. I don't think it's a bad play to do that just for transparency for the player on the right. I just, I don't know. Um, the player on the right, or Trafalgar Law has access to so many different good cards, right? Especially if you're playing, the player on the right is playing the Rush Zoros. You know that Rush Zoro could be a possibility for the player on the left, spoiler alert, we know the deck list. We know that there's no Rush Zoro for the player on the left, but the player on the right doesn't know that overall. And so they know that they're definitely playing kid killers, right? So really just trying to think about it at this point saying, okay, you can keep going on stuff. And here's a 7K swing coming. Like I mentioned earlier, 7K swing might be good. Going to have to either block or take this overall and so the problem with this right now i feel like if you're the player on the right side you're gonna need like you're gonna need some good stuff off of this life and a non-counter card is not what you need at all on this going to be bottom decking nothing but being able to play the kid and killer for free and so turning that kid and killer sideways Real quick, with two Dawn left, going to be a 7K swing right there, and cannot counter out of it. This is going to be a game over if you attach the two Dawn and swing eight with the Sanji. You can't stop this kid and killer. You're going to have to block with the queen, and so you're going to have no defense left and available. No outs in this one, so... Got to see exactly what our player decides to do on here. I mean, your only play is either lose the game now or be able to uh, or just block with the queen and make them make the correct play, right? They could, for some reason, just swing six overall at some point and be able to do that, but going to be attaching the two on that Sanji and swinging eight and winning the game, our champion of the Hiroshima Championship Series Tournament. Going to get the look at that celebration. Yes, absolutely astounding. Congratulations to that player. And again, thank you to the production. Again, this is not my stream overall. This is the wonderful official stream. If you want to go check that out and the other games that you got there, if you don't want to watch my videos, I don't blame you. But... That will be in the description below. But for those of you that want to stay, let's check out the deck list. Now, here's the second place deck list overall. This was the player on the right. Very similar to probably what we're going to see in the player on the left, the winning deck list. Just a couple key differences 
in this deck. This one playing a full four, four of the like Trafalgar Laws right here, the Otamas, which is something that some people go four to two. Going to be playing two Roanora Zoros in there, an extra addition to the deck that a lot of people like overall in this one. Also playing a full four of the Sanji right here. A really good blocker and then also a 2k, just a ton of counter card. Again, this deck playing four, eight, 12, and 16 2ks overall. Absolutely insane, but just not having enough 2ks at the end of that game. This list feels a little bit more aggressive than the usual list with the two Roranora Zoros in there. And here's the winning deck list. We didn't see Beppo and Zoro Juro be played in that game, but two good cards that I feel like that you can play in a lot of other matchups. Black Maria not really having an impact in this game for our player. We could have seen it on the left side of the field, but choosing instead to play this Pudding. Pudding probably just a little bit more value in forcing a Gordon or Raise Max to be able to bottom deck it instead of, you know, just being able to do the Black Maria for free. So really interesting note overall in the mirror match. I'm glad we kind of got to see a mirror match to be able to see that showcased in the game to be able to learn that. And so really, really cool. And also Trafalgar Law, just a really, really good deck. Again, if you don't think this deck is tier one, I don't know what game you're playing, but it's not the One Piece trading card game. <laughs> OP08 had a super strong showing with Trafalgar Law, but we'll see if it holds on at this point. We did see other decks previously in other formats like Yamato, right? really excel when they first came out and when they first, you know, they had a really great starting of the gate, but then slowly, slowly fell off in terms of the other decks that kept improving and morphed kind of around it, really just, you know, modified itself to be able to handle a deck like that. So we'll see if Trafalgar Law has that ability to do so. I don't know per se. To be able to deal with Trafalgar Law, you're going to have to have insane removal, I feel like, to be able to get rid of a ton of their cards, whether that is the Black Marias and Puddings that come down in the game, or their kids, right? Kids are really, really good. We've seen Queen played a ton through this weekend, and then in the later stages of the game, stuff like the Kid and Killer and the Sanji. The Sanji being real interesting, I feel like, of a card in if, we tr if we talk about its cost a little bit, because it does say, as I mentioned earlier, that in your hand it costs three less, but once it comes down on the field, right, if you're playing something like against Rob Lucci, right, once that card is on the field, it sticks as a six cost, right, and immediately goes from three to six, you just cheat it out. And so getting to that six makes it a little bit tougher for Rob Lucci decks to deal with, right? Because it's more minusing that you have to effectively do and can be really, really strong. So we'll see exactly where this goes. I know I mentioned that I think it's Aichi. The Aichi Japan Championships are happening this weekend. And I'll try to get you some good commentary over those. I'm sorry I don't have the equipment that I usually have. I promise my mic is much, much better back in Las Vegas where I live. But right now, I'm about 4,000 miles away from that microphone. So right now, this will have to do. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you in the next one.